Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty and most gracious Father, we thank you for the glories of this day, for this chance to gather in your holy name. Continue to bless us by the power of your grace in our life, that in this holy season of Advent, we may continue to be uplifted and prepared to receive Jesus, our King. All this we pray and ask in his holy name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Hey, uh, Livingston, you got to unmute. Just in his sight, he shall come down like showers upon the fruitful earth and tell them to like power how they and where they were. kingdom without end for every foe victorious he on his throne shall rest from age to age for glorious all blessings and all blessed the tide of time shall
shall never his covenant remove. His name shall stand forever, his changeless name alone. Indeed, this is the day which the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Lord, we praise your holy name. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Lord, we praise your holy name. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, glory, glory, hallelujah. Lord, we praise your holy name. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Lord, we praise your holy name. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our, our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, the glory of God the Father. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Lord, we praise your holy name. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Lord, we praise your holy name. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Mm -hmm. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
That portion of the Psalter appointed this day is Psalm 25, verses 1 through 9. We will read it antiphonally or by half verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not, let me not be humiliated. Or let, let my, my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord. And teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation, and you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love. For they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right. And teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness. To those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Glory be, be to the, the Father, Father, to the Son, and to the Holy, to the Holy Spirit, Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, now and, and will, will be, be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Reading from Paul's letter to the church in Thessalonica. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he be so strengthened, your hearts in holiness, that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Watchmen tell us of the night what its signs of promise are. Travelers o'er your mountain high see the glory beaming star. Watchman does his beauteous ray not of joy or hope foretell. Travelers, yes, it brings the day. Promise day of Israel. Watchmen tell us of the night. Higher yet that star ascends travelers blessedness and light peace and truth its course portends watchmen will its beams alone gird the spot that gave them birth Travelers, ages are its own. See it burst o'er all the earth. Watchmen tell us of the night, for the morning seems to dawn. Traveler, darkness takes his light doubt and terror brought withdrawn oh watchman 
Bid thy wandering cease. I thee to thy quiet home. Traveler, lo, the Prince of Peace. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. And Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud, with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with this passion and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Mm. Soon and very soon we are going to see the King Oh, soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Oh, soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. May the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all as we do to you, so that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. In the name of the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. I found this morning's epistle to be not only an appropriate passage of scripture to begin our new season of Advent with, but also a beautiful prayer which shows an example set by St. Paul that perhaps we all need to think about for ourselves in terms of our own lives as Christians. For St. Paul, everything was of God. In this epistle, we find him praying to God to open a way for him so that he could come to Thessalonica. It was to God that he turned to for guidance in the ordinary day-to-day -day problems of life. Now, one of the biggest mistakes we so often fall into in life is to turn to God only in the midst of some unexpected emergencies or some tragedies or some shattering crisis. Now, I can remember some years ago when I represented the diocese at a council of churches dinner. It was being placed at a table where a gentleman was talking to us about some of the adventures he had at sea while he was in the Navy. He mentioned that before he enlisted in the Navy, he hardly ever listened to or was concerned about the weather forecasts. But when he was on the big ship way out in the middle of the sea, where storms could develop at any time, he and the rest of the crew would listen 
and listen intently. The point I deciphered from this example is that it is quite possible to do without the weather forecast when life seems comfortable and safe. But we find out that it is essential to listen when life might depend on it. You know, too often we try to use the same rationale with God. In ordinary things, we disregard him, thinking that we can manage well enough by ourselves. I suppose that from the time we were children right through adulthood, we all been taught by society to stand on our own two feet, having to lean or depend on nobody in this life but ourselves as the mark of a truly powerful and independent all-American man or woman. But yet in the midst of playing our societal game, we too often must painfully discover that there are just too many things, too many things to which society has no answer. And we're left all alone, bewildered as to which way to turn. Sometimes it's only when life appears to have let us down that we begin to start thinking about trying God. Subconsciously, what we are doing is just using God to achieve a God rescue life. When in fact, we like St. Paul should seek to be accompanied with him and to achieve a God-directed life. We know we should know the difference between a God-rescued life and a God-directed life. It is perhaps this very fact that Paul had in mind when in today's epistle he prays that God will enable the Thessalonians to fulfill the law of love in their daily life. I've heard many people from time to time express their concern as to why the Christian life seems so difficult, especially in the ordinary everyday relationships. Certainly, we must realize that our fate was never intended to help us duck the trials of life, but to truly face them and live in spite of them. The problem we often encounter come when we try to live life by ourselves. The person who goes out each morning without prayer is, in effect, saying, I can quite well tackle today's problems on my own. I can handle it all by myself. I don't need to bother God. The people who turn in each night without speaking to God are, in effect, saying, I can handle on my own whatever consequences the day has brought. Hmm. It always baffles me to hear and to see how easily people can criticize and shake their fingers at other countries whose outlook on life might be termed in general as atheistic. But yet in a God-respected religious freedom society like ours, we take our religion so much for granted that we're often not much, if any ways, better off than the people we're criticizing. The great English writer John Buchan once described an atheist as a person who has no invisible means of support. But we, like St. Paul, have in our hearts the persuasion, I should say, do we, like St. Paul, have in our hearts the persuasion that nothing in this life, past, present, or future, can separate us from the love of God given through Jesus Christ? And if not, then we may have also have to say that we have no invisible means of support. Great writer Dr. James Billington noted the fact that while most Americans claim to believe in God, most of the rich, the educated, and the influential do not. A survey once pointed out of 140 randomly selected leaders of our nation showed that 93% of them had a religious upbringing, exactly the same percentage, 93%, Seldom of them never attended a religious services. And perhaps the saddest realization inferred from this fact is that our nation is developing more and more leaders whose belief are not being taught that wealth, education, influence give power and power gives independence from others, even from God, who in their minds is there only to pacify the poor and the less fortunate. Indeed, many of us cannot help but feel pessimistic about the future of our country and the world and perhaps helpless in terms of what we can do to make that all important start to turn things around. 
Well, the first thing we should do, however, is what Paul did as depicted in the latter part of today's epistle when he prays to God for that ultimate safety, the ultimate safety that God would so preserve his people in righteousness that on that great day of judgment, they will not be ashamed. See, a lot of people in this world will be shocked and ashamed when in the midst of their misdirected life, they, as all people ultimately will, come face to face with Jesus Christ. The only way to prepare to meet Christ is to live daily with him. That means we pray in the morning when we get up, we pray at noontime, and we pray before we go to bed. And if you find any other time in between, use it to pray. Use it to bring closer, yourself closer to God. And then the shock of judgment day will be not for those who have so lived that they have become God's friends, but it will be a terrible day for those who will meet Jesus as a terrible stranger. Today, we begin our new season of Advent, a start of a new church year, a new beginning. As you can notice, a change in the altar hangings, a change in the Eucharistic lectionary. We are in year C now, which is the change of the readings for the Sundays of the year. But the most important thing for us to remember is that Advent is a season of preparation, preparation for the coming of our Lord. It's the one time of year the church has set aside for us to specifically search our souls to see if indeed we are prepared to meet our Savior. If today is the last day on earth, are we ready for Jesus? Are we prepared? Is our soul and mind there? Have we been living with Christ in that God-directed life throughout the year? Or have we played the societal game and are counting on a god rescue existence? When Christ appears in and out of our life, do we receive him in our hearts as a true friend? Or is he always coming up, catching us off guard and being received like a terrible stranger? My prayer for all of us on this day and throughout this most holy season is that we will truly make this a holy, holy advent, whereby holy preparedness takes precedence over societal complacency or spiritual laziness, and where the love of Christ shall remain our ultimate concern throughout the year. Advent's a wonderful time, a new beginning, a chance to say, Lord, I'm on your side. Lord, open my heart. Let me receive you. Lord, guide me by the power of your Holy Spirit. It's that time of year. Let's use it to be prepared, because Jesus is coming. Amen. Now unto God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, we ascribe this most justly due almighty majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth this day, now, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith by reciting the Nicene Creed, found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light, light from light, true God from true God, God, God begotten, God not made, made, of, of one, one being with the Father, him the whole thing things are made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He, he will come again in glory to judge the living, the living and the dead, and, and his kingdom, kingdom will have no end. no end. We believe in the we Holy Spirit, Spirit the Lord, the, the giver of life, who, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For prayers of the people, we will use Form 6 found in your bulletin or on page 392 in the Book of Common Prayer. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who claim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and William, our bishop, and for all other ministers, especially Canon Wynn and Father Radix. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Remembering as always in our prayers, those of our church family who are ill, who are struggling anyway, praying that the power of Jesus Christ, the great physician of souls, will strengthen them this, this time and this their hour of need. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. God, thanks for the glory of this day, for this Thanksgiving weekend when we remember the power of Christ in our life, and we give thanks to those of our congregation who are present. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. In God's mercy on all those who have lost their life in gun violence in our nation at this time. And those who have lost life because of the COVID virus. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your, your compassion, compassion forgive us our, our sins. No, no unknown. Unknown. Things Think done and, and less undone. undone. And, and so hold us by your spirit, that we may live, we live and serve, serve you in newness of life, of life to the, the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you of all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Lord, my friend. Oh, I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem just like John, oh, I want to be ready, yes, I want to be ready, I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem just 
like John. John said that Jerusalem was four square. Walk in Jerusalem just like John. I hope, good Lord, I'll meet you there. Walk in Jerusalem just like John. Oh, I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem just like John. When Peter was preaching at Pentecost, walk in Jerusalem just like John. Oh, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Walk in Jerusalem just like John. Oh, I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. To walk in Jerusalem just like John. Oh, I want to be ready. I want to be there. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. To walk in Jerusalem just like John. To walk in Jerusalem. To walk in Jerusalem just like John. John. All right. Amen. I'll warm you sinners up one way or another. <laughs> Announcements. Okay. Good morning, Christ the King. Good morning, Max. Good morning. Hi greet you in the name of Jesus. Welcome. We are so glad that you have joined us either in person or online, and we hope you feel a sense of connection as we share this time together. There are many opportunities to get involved with Christ the King, even remotely. So to learn more about membership, baptism, or confirmation, or to receive emails about upcoming Christ the King Episcopal Church events, visit us at www.christtheKingnj.org or email at ctk at christthekingnj.org and we will be happy to help you in any way that we can. Christ the King Episcopal Church in Willingboro is joining with people and organizations all over the world and restricting our movements to mitigate the spread of the coronavirus. Christ the King is now open for in-person worship on Sundays at 10 a.m. You may also tune in online via Zoom at 10 a.m. on Sundays. In-person services have resumed. Whether you are a lifelong Episcopalian, from another faith tradition, exploring your faith, or just visiting, you are welcome to join us in worship. Please be advised, though, that um, if you attend the physical church service, you must wear a mask. This is required by the Diocese of New Jersey. We Episcopalians believe in a loving, liberating, and life-giving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Don't forget Christ the King office hours. During this pandemic, the church is open only on Tuesdays and Thursdays between the hours of 12 p.m. and 4 p.m. There is no in-person contacts or meetings, and you can contact us by telephone at 609-877-2992 or, of course, email ctk at christthekingnj.org. Also, please remember that the first season of the church year, beginning with the fourth Sunday before Christmas and continuing through the day before Christmas, the name is derived from a Latin word for coming. The season is a time of preparation and expectation for the coming celebration of our Lord's nativity and for the final coming of Christ in power and glory. In the bulletin, we have the first week of Advent saying yes to the journey. 
um, as Advent begins this week, we invite you to orient yourself to the coming of Jesus at Christmas through the practices of journeying, journeying the way of love. This journey begins by saying yes to God's call to birth new life into the world, a call that is both powerful and gentle, a call that will, if fully embraced, grow beyond our imaginations, spilling out of ourselves and into our family, friends, community, and the whole world. Over the course of this holy season, we invite you to respond to that call using these daily practices and encourage you to offer them to friends, family, and neighbors. For more Advent resources related to the way of love, visit episcopalchurch.org forward slash way of love. There you'll find links to the full Advent curriculum, Journeying the Way of Love, as well as Living the Way of Love in Community. It's a nine session curriculum for use at any time. So of course today, Sunday, November 28th, please look at worship and in the bulletin you will state, see that it is stated for each day up until next Saturday of what you can do on a daily basis as you prepare during Advent. Don't forget Bible studies on Mondays and Wednesday prayers have resumed. The Ordu calendar are available for only $3 each. Please contact Linda Anderson for purchase at 609-760-1050 or leave a message with the church office. Don't forget, there is a message from the New Jersey Department of Health. If you received your second dose of the Pfizer six months ago and are 65 or older, a long-term care resident, an adult with underlying medical conditions, or an adult at increased risk of COVID-19 exposure because of your job, you are now eligible for a Pfizer booster shot. If you, a friend, or a family member meets the above criteria or would like more information on the eligibility and assistance in finding a nearby location to receive the booster dose, you can call 855-568-0545 or go online to covid19.nj.gov finder. Boosters have not been approved for those who receive the Moderna or J&J &J vaccine, so stay tuned for further information on booster approval. Please read in the dais, uh, I'm sorry, in the bulletin about the 238th Diocesan Convention. It gives the dates and deadlines of everything that is to take place. Stewardship, of course, we are in the season for stewardship, and there is information on why should I pledge. So if you have not submitted your 2022 pledge card, please contact the church office, please, and thank you for supporting Christ the King. Also in the uh, bulletin is a detailed article about Episcopal leaders react to guilty verdicts in killing of Ahmad Aubrey in Georgia. Please read the article as well as the many links that it does give that you can go into further detail. So of course, on a happy note, wedding congratulations. Christ the King Church would like to congratulate and God bless on your eternal commitment, Dr. Sharon Rogers and Mr. Mitchell, wishing you more love you ever imagine in the years to come. Dr. Sharon Rogers tied the knot on November 19th and is now Sharon Rogers hyphenated Mitchell. Please keep them <laughs> in your prayers. And this is from the Reverend Canon James Wynn, Emerson Cooper, Senior Warden, the Vestry, the parishioners of Christ the King, and her mom, Mildred Bailey. So congratulations. <laughs> So let's not forget our warm, one warm coat drive. Help those in need this winter. Christ the King by supporting our first one warm coat drive. It has been running since November 1st and will run to December 15, 2021. Please bring new 
or nearly new coats for men, women, or children in all sizes for donation to a local nonprofit organization. Now is the time to give back for all the blessings we have received. Donation boxes are located in the Guild Room. And these donations will support the following nonprofits, Trinity Cathedral Food Pantry Outreach and Catholic Charities of Burlington Community Access Center. This is brought to you by Christ the King Parish Life Committee. So please make your donations. Also, they will accept monetary donations and they will do the shopping for you. Christ the King, I say to you, let's not forget those of us who are still not vaccinated, hopefully you have received enough information to understand vaccinations and boosters. And don't forget our children, as well as a new Omicron deviant has um, come forth. And now it is affecting, they state, a lot of the younger generation. So let's not forget our family, friends, and neighbors in our community so that we can eventually get rid of this pandemic. May God bless you. Peace and blessings for a safe, healthy week. Thank you so much, Max. Thank you, Max. Just one correction. It's uh, Shannon, uh, Sharon, Dr. Sharon Sharp. Oh. Mitchell is the first name. Oh, okay. Mitchell Sharp. So we say Mitchell Sharp. <laughs> there you go. <come. laughs> That's better than Sharp Mitchell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Max, so one addition to that, just reminding again that we are in our stewardship campaign throughout the rest of this month, beginning of December. If you have not pledged and you would like to, there, uh, just ask any of the ushers. There are pledge cards in the back of the church, I should say in the foyer there, that you can fill out so that we can make plans for the upcoming year. So walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a perfect offering and sacrifice to God. Offer to him, hark, a thrilling voice is sounding.
things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. We we'll continue with the great thanksgiving. It's found on page 361, or as, as you have there in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great glory to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and became subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your own and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling your, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and ending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament 
and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. At the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. We all stand and lift our hands to praise the Lord. Let us sing the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. gifts of God for the people of God. Take me remembrance that Christ has died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Christ. Amen. 
blood of Christ, body and blood of our salvation. Amen. Body and blood of Christ, body and blood of our salvation. Amen. Go in peace. We love and serve the Lord. As you remain seated, let us sing the communion hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus. Prepare the way 
of the Lord. Say to all people, here is your God. Prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. Amen. At this time, as always, we we take a moment to pray for our church family and members, especially those who will be celebrating birthdays this coming week. Especially want to pray for our own Ida Goodwin and Gloria Davis, both celebrating birthdays the first day of December. It's later this week. Let's pray for them. Watch over your children. Ida and Gloria, O oh Lord, as their days increase, bless and guide them wherever they may be, strengthen them when they stand, comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful, raise them up should they fall, and in their heart, may your peace which passes all understanding abide all the days of their life. And all this we pray and ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's also pray for those who may be celebrating anniversaries. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor upon all your servants and celebrating the joy and blessing of an anniversary this week. Grant that they may continue to grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. In this we pray and ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Also remember in our prayers, those who on this holiday weekend will be traveling. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation, whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve and watch over all your servants be traveling this week. Surround them, we pray, with your loving care. Protect them from every danger and bring them in safety to their journeys and returning them home safely to us, we pray. In all of this, we humbly ask, in the name of he who died, it was raised for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Let's continue to pray for those persons who are in trouble or bereavement, especially family members who we are praying for. O oh, merciful Father, who has taught us in your holy word that you do not willingly afflict or grieve the children of humanity, look with pity upon the sorrows of your servants for whom our prayers are offered this day. Remember them, O oh Lord, in mercy. Nourish their souls with patience. Comfort them with a sense of your goodness. Lift up your countenance upon them and give them your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we entrust all who are dear to us to thy never failing care and love for this life and for the life to come, knowing that you are doing for them better things that we can desire or pray for. Strengthen their hearts. Lift them up, O oh Lord, in this day, that they may know of your body presence and feel the comfort of your everlasting arms around them. This we pray and ask always in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Let us also pray for our senior citizens, all the aged. Look with mercy, O oh God, our Father, on all whose increasing years bring them weakness, distress, or isolation. Provide for them homes of dignity and peace. Give them understanding helpers and the willingness to accept help. And as their strength diminishes, increase their faith and their assurance of your love. This we ask in the name of he who died and was raised for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. And let us also pray for our young people going to schools and traumas and also in schools and other places at this time. God, our Father, you see your children growing up in an unsteady and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more life than the ways of the world, and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them to take failure not as a measure of their worth, but as a chance for a new start. Give them strength to hold their faith in you and to keep alive their joy in your creation. This we humbly ask for always 
In the name of he who died, it was raised for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. And let us continue to pray for the committee and their search for the new bishop and for the election of a bishop. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, look graciously on this your church and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a bishop for this diocese of New Jersey, that they may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us for all our ministries. This we humbly pray and ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Finally, let us also pray for the unity of the church. O oh God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our only Savior, the Prince of Peace, give us grace seriously to lay to heart great dangers we are in by our unhappy divisions. Take away all hatred and prejudice and whatever else may hinder us from godly union and concord. That is, there is but one body and one spirit, one hope of our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. So we may be all of one heart and of one soul. Unite us in one holy bond of faith and peace, of faith and charity, in the midst of this wonderful Advent season, help us to be prepared for the glorious coming of our Savior. And may with one mind and one mouth continue to glorify you. This we pray in the name of he who is coming, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray our prayer of thanksgiving is found there in your bulletin. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Christ our Lord. Amen. Announcement. Will do, will do. Most heavenly and gracious Father, watch over your servants who are asking for prayer and especially who may go through the ordeal of an operation this week. Use the doctors and nurses must administer, Nate. Let their hands do your work, let their feet run your errand, but above all, let your healing power be upon him, upon Glenda and the rest of the family, and upon all of us. All this we do pray and ask in the name of he who died, who was raised for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, be upon you this day, remain with you now and forevermore. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thank Thanks be to God. God. Our closing hymn is found there. Lo, he comes with clouds descending. Every end.
nailed him to the tree. Deeply wailing, deeply wailing, deeply wailing, shall the true Messiah see. Accept, O Lord, this service of our lips and the service of our lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy Sunday, everybody. Happy Advent. <laughs> 